Today, we're going to talk about how we sync two AdGuard instances. So you, when you make a change on the master AdGuard, it also syncs to the backup AdGuard or the secondary AdGuard. This was a request that was made by one of my viewers, and so I'm going to do it. It's uh, fairly easy to do. You need to be running a VM and some other things, but we'll go through it step by step and we'll get it done. So let's get started. Now this video is going to be a little more hands-on with the command line. We're going to be installing some stuff in a virtual machine to be able to sync our two AdGuard instances across. Now, if you haven't seen my previous AdGuard video, go ahead and watch that because it talks about what I do with AdGuard, uh, what it's used for and how I've got that set up. I am running two instances of AdGuard, one on my Home Assistant Blue device as an add-on. Uh, and you can see that over here. And I'm running a secondary instance of AdGuard on my, and here we go, let's show it to you this time. And I'm running a secondary instance of AdGuard on my Raspberry Pi 4 as a failover device. Now, when I make a change here, I want this change to be able to propagate over to my other AdGuard instance so that I don't have to go and change both of these. So, so for example, if I wanna go into a filter and do something with block services, let's say I wanna block whatever this thing is, uh, once I save it here, it will take the block services and propagate those over to my other backup device. So that way, regardless of which AdGuard server my clients are using in my network, it will get the same stuff. So let's dig into what we do here. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna install what's called Portainer. Portainer is basically a, a user interface front end for Docker containers. And the only reason I'm doing this is so that I can more easily interact with the logs and stuff like that. You don't have to do this, but I find it easier. So we're gonna kind of follow the steps that go along with installing Portainer. And again, this is gonna be on the command line. So you need to make sure that you're comfortable with the command line. You need to have a virtual machine or some sort of uh, Linux distro or something running to do this. And I realize this isn't for everybody, so uh, watch along anyway just to enjoy the video uh, and maybe learn something. Uh, and for those that are running VMs, you understand what you're doing here. So I'm on a demo VM right now, and I'm the, I've already got Docker installed. That's up and running. That's something else you need to make sure you're doing. So I'm just going to follow along with some commands that I've already run uh, on here, and that's just essentially following along with this right here. Uh, I've got it tailored just a little bit. Um, but it, it'll work the same way. You can follow the, the documentation here or uh, do your own. So the first thing we need to do is create a data or a container to house the portainer data. That way, whenever you start and stop the container, it will come back up with all of your environment settings. So we're going to create a volume. Uh, let's see. Let's see, do it the right way here. So sudo docker volume create, and we're going to call it portainer data. And it tells you here that it successfully created that. Now that you get the Portana data volume created, we're gonna create the actual, or install the Portana Docker container. And we're gonna do that with a command called sudo docker run. And again, that follows along with essentially what this is right here. The difference being, I'm not gonna install this secondary port. I'm gonna use port 9443 and map that across from my host into my Docker container. And so you can see here, we're just running that. Uh, it will actually go down and get the uh, Portana Docker container if we don't have that already or the image. And so we're going to go ahead and run that. And it's going to say it can't find the image. And it's going to go ahead and pull everything it needs down from Docker and install that. That's the beauty of Docker and containers. And we're already all set up and ready to go. So now if I go to, uh, if, first of all, let me just make sure it's running. So we'll do a command called sudo docker container. And you can see that it's running right here. It's been created as up 13 seconds. And so when you go to your web browser on port 9443, of course, you got to get through the whole certificate thing, which I don't have set up on here. And then I'm going to create a username or a username and password. I'll just use admin for default now. Create the user. And now to get started, we're going to use the local environment, which Portainer is running. And we're done, right? So we have um, one container listed here. And that's our Portainer. That's this thing here that we're running right now. We're going to use this to look at the logs for the other container. Now you could install what I'm going to do next using Portainer, but I find it much easier to use the command line. So we're going to install this thing called AdGuard Home Dash Sync, and this is what I said it does. It it syncs the two uh, different AdGuard instances together. 
So it syncs general settings, filters, rewrites, services, clients, DNS config, and DHCP config. And it says here by default, all features are enabled. Single features can be disabled in the configuration. And what I'm going to do, and I'm using Home Assistant's add-on for AdGuard on both of these, and this just works just fine with that, with this uh, caveat, which I'll show you here in a minute. So in order to do that, we're going to go back to our command line, and we're going to install and run a Docker command. And let me see. I believe it's on here. Uh, yep, it's something like this, similar to this, tailored to what I'm doing. The only change I made, I think, uh, verse, uh, except for the path, is the port here. I have something already on port 8080, and so I need to change the port on the host side, the computer side, which is 8083 now. So I'll go ahead and paste that in here. So we'll copy that. Now, here we are. We're going to run just like we did up here. We ran a command uh, using the dash D flag, gave it a name, port 8083, and then there's a configuration file that you're going to put in here as well. And I'll go over that in just a moment. We're going to install this by just hitting the return or enter key to execute it. And if it hadn't had this image already here, which apparently it already has, it would have downloaded that and done everything it needed to like it did for Portainer. So if we go over now to our Portainer local here and refresh it, we should see the AdGuard Home Sync installed. It's on port 8083. That's the port you'll talk to it on, although there's nothing really to do except see that it's running. So this doesn't really do anything. And then it's on port 8080 for the Docker container. And these are the two things that are running. This is why I like using Portainer as a visual container or a visual uh, type view of things, because it's easy to do. We can click on this and then look at our logs and see what's going on. I'll show you that in a minute. Now, before you install the, the AdGuard container, you're going to need to create a configuration file. And I am going to show you the configuration file the way I have it set up now and talk about a couple caveats. And now you can put this configuration file anywhere you want on your host device. You just need to be able to reference it here when you do this. So I'm kind of doing it backwards. Make sure you have the configuration file first and then run this command and put the uh, configuration file in the path here so that you know where, or so that it knows what configuration to run. And if you mess this up and it doesn't work and your log files aren't working, you can restart this uh, as many times as you need to to reread the configuration file. So don't be scared that you have to do the configura configuration file correctly the first time, although it's really not that hard. Uh, you can restart the container. And again, that's another reason I like Portainer is I can continuously restart this as many times as, as I need to reread that configuration file. Even if you get it the wrong place, you can still uh, fix that and, and re rerun it by uh, changing the commands or the path. All right, so let's look at the configuration file. So it's listed here, home, me, and then agarsync.yaml. Okay, so this is a configuration file, and you'll first see right up here, and I wish I could blow this up for you, but for some reason on this uh, M MT putty thing I'm using, I can't actually expand it out. So I apologize for that. Um, but you are going to run on start true. Cron is how often it updates. Now, it defaults in the configuration file to 10 minutes. Uh, if I make a change on my master, let's say I block a service for some reason, I want it to be pretty quick. So I'll actually set this to one minute. So it updates every one minute. That's your personal preference. Uh, the origin is where uh, basically the master ad guard server that you're going to use is where you're going to make the changes that will then propagate to your other replicas. You can have more than one replica, by the way. So here's the URL with port 85, and we'll talk about that here in just a minute. Insecure skip verify. It's going to skip the um, the TLS check, which I want because I'm not running anything TLS wise here. And then you'll assign, uh, set the username and password for your AdGuard instance for it to talk to. And then your replica is the same way. Uh, it's the same at the IP address plus the port insecure skip verify if you want to and then username and password and then your api is port 8083 which is what i changed the uh the ad guard sync to so instead of being port 8080 this is 8083 and then again your username and password if you're using that and then these are where you set the features uh i'm just synchronizing everything so general settings query log stats it, uh, the whole thing uh these are query log configs by the way not the query log itself 
uh, your stats, client services, filters, DHCP, and DNS. And that's it. This is your basic setup file, and it's all you need to make it run. And port 85, you'll notice I've specified port 85 on both of these. Uh, this is important because you need to go over here to your AdGuard instance, and you need to be able to get to it from the local network or wherever this VM is running at. So in Home Assistant, and this will differ de depending on how you're running AdGuard. If you're running AdGuard as a standalone appliance or standalone device or something in a VM, you'll have to set this however you however you set that that way. But in the AdGuard add-on, I'm gonna go to configuration in my add-ons here, and I am going to go to the AdGuard configuration page, and I'm going to make sure port 85 is open here. It's not required for ingress when I'm using the interface or the UI for AdGuard, but it is required for that device to talk to it. And one of the things you can do once you have this set up to test it is go to the IP address and make sure port 85 is accessible. Now, this tells me that I didn't set, an H set it as HTTPS, so I will do that now. Here we go, and it's gonna ask me for a username and password. And anyway, if you sign in, it'll work, right? So it's basically talking. And you check that on both of your primary and your backup uh, or your replicas, make sure the ports are open and it's working. And we have the same situation here. It probably asked me for username and password. All right. So that's what you said in your configuration file. That username and password will get you the same access here. So make sure that port is open before you go in here and you try to use this or it's not going to work. Now, having done all that, if we go back to Portainer, one of the most important things you need to do when you're done is make sure you look at your logs here. So we're just going to go to containers, click on the add guard sync container. And by the way, it should say running here. If it doesn't, you've got another issue. You can try to start it from here. Uh, but if it doesn't start, you may have some other issue. But anyway, if it is running, you go to logs and we can see now it's using the add guard or the config file and config add guard sync dash yaml. The, this is a, the configuration file that it imported into the container. So my config file is home chris add guard sync dot yaml. And then when you, when you run that uh, command to install it, it's going to actually put it here in this file on your Docker container. So that's why you see it here. Uh, gives you the version of the AdGuard sync. Uh, your cron job is set up for every minute and starting the API server on port 8083. And then it's running sync on startup. So now you see here that I have it every minute going from the 121, which is my primary, to 158, which is my uh, replica. If I go into AdGuard now, and I change a setting. So I'm gonna change a setting under DNS settings here. I'm just gonna add another uh, DNS server. And with that, once I save it, first let me test it. And it's tested, let me get out of the way here. You can see here that it's it's working fine. All right, so once we've got that tested and, and once I save it, apply it, I'll come back over here to the logs and the logs are set to auto refresh. You'll see it here in a minute. Once the next minute comes up where it does a synchronization, you'll see that it syncs that information from the primary AdGuard server over to the secondary AdGuard server. All right, so it ran it. It ran from this one to this one. It says client uh, set DNS config list from the host. Uh, and it did the sync and the synchronization is done. So you see here, it changed the DNS config list and it moved it over to the other one. So if we go over to the secondary AdGuard instant, and by the way, these AdGuard instances actually have to be running or you will not have, or you'll have errors on that as well. So make sure they're running. Whoops, go to AdGuard here. And if I look at my DNS settings, you'll see, and it doesn't matter the order here, you'll see it moved it out of here, but here it is, the one I added. So if I go back over here and I remove it now, and I apply it. And then we look at the portainer logs. We'll see that during the next cycle, the next sync cycle, which is doing every minute, that you'll see the same thing come across here if we got it in time. And there it is. Now, if we go back over here and we refresh this page, you'll see that it's gone on the secondary. So it's very slick, very fast, and just works. What did we do today? We installed portainer. So we could look at the log files easily. We um, 
install the Docker container that creates the AdGuard sync. We started them both up, configured them, not in that order, of course. And then now we're syncing back and forth. Now these log files uh, under Portainer, if you see any issues in the log files, make sure you go in there and you, you check a few things. Make sure that, and it'll tell you the error, it might be a little bit cryptic, but if you're, if it can't start up because it can't find the sync, sync file or this the YAML file, make sure you have that specified correctly when you build it. Now this is up and already built. If you have the incorrect uh, uh, settings, you go to duplicate edit here. And this is the image of course that we installed. So if you go into volumes, this is where your sync file is. If this is not correct, can blow that up. If this is not correct, you can change it here and then you can redeploy the container. And when you redeploy the container, it will get the right location. So if you install it using the command line here and you mess it up, it's just easiest to go into Portainer here and find out where it is on your server and put it in the correct spot here. So just double check some of these things as well. Super simple to do that. It makes your ability to run two different AdGuard instances on the same uh, network easy to manage. Again, you can have more than one uh, replica. You can have multiple replicas and it will push across the changes to all the replicas. All right, that's all I have for today. I hope that was useful. Um, super simple to just create two servers on your network, block your ads, block your malware, and then sync everything across between the two. If you have any questions, make sure you put those down in the comments. Uh, hit me up on Discord as well. Uh, if you're not a subscriber, hit that button as well. The thumbs up if you liked the video. What else? Um, if you're not a channel member, I would really appreciate you joining the channel to help support what I do here. And we will see you on the next one.